All right, Miamians and listeners from around the world, welcome to another episode of Miami Global Net. Today we have Richie F's, partner of Skate Free, which is a nonprofit that has created the Lot 11 skate park under the I-95 in, in Miami. So we're here to get the story and to learn about the team behind this and, and the passion behind this because it has been a good contribution to our city. So um, Richie, welcome on the show. Thank you for joining us. How are you? No problem, man. Thanks for having me. All good. Early Miami morning. The weather's getting nice. I don't know. I don't know yeah, what to think. It's kind, of, it's, kind of, it's kind of getting nice. Hopefully we don't have any rain for the next two days, which will be, will be great for me. What do you have going on? Um, we got a contest at the skate park, a Hot Wheels. Um, they have a contest going on this weekend, um, today and tomorrow. What What are the, uh, can you share some of the details of Hot Wheels? So Hot Wheels, you know, the, the, the company Mattel that makes toys. Um, Hot Wheels is is that company. That you remember those little toy cars kids used to buy? Yep. So they're, they're in skateboarding now, and they're, they're actually one of the sponsors for my son. So every year they keep these contests around the countries. It's called Under 16, where they feature BMX, scooters, and skateboarders. Under 16, and they keep these contests around the, the state. So do this leg is happening in Miami this weekend. So we have a bunch of um, young skateboarders that flew from around the country just to come to take part in this contest. And how often does it happen? Every year? Yeah, every year. They have about, I'd say, five or six contests. LA, we just did one, we did one in LA. They had one in Arizona. We have Miami. The next one is in Dunwoody, Georgia. And do you, do you personally go to all these or do you just attend the one no, that comes down? No, I go to them because they sponsor my son. So they, they usually fly us out to all these competition. So tell he's us. One of their, he's one of their ambassadors for um, Hot Wheels. Your son? Yes. So tell us about your son. Tell us about your son. He's, a spo he's sponsored by so, Hot Wheels. Um, so my son is Zion F. Most people know him. You know, he's, he's this young kid from Miami that started skating when he was three years old. He's 12 years old. He's 12 now, but he's been kind of making a name for himself in the skate world, which he's sponsored by Vans. He's amateur for Vans. He's amateur for Santa Cruz. He's on the Santa Cruz um, skateboarding team. Um, sponsored, sponsored by Hot Wheels, Gab Wireless. Skatebird, a new skate park that's being built in Miami. Um, Richter Wheels, um, Independence Trucks. You know, he's got a couple Mob Grip. He's got a couple of sponsors behind him. And how, uh, so, and he's um, Hot Wheels Flam around because he skates in these contests. And does he? Is this something that he does full time? That how does he manage his schooling? He's home. We had to homeschool him. Mm. We had to homeschool him because we travel a lot. So he's homeschooled. Um, mostly all my kids are homeschooled. I have another one, Jack, Jagger. He's a ballet dancer. He's 14. And the six-year-old, he just saw. Uh, he's an upcoming skateboarder, too. He's six going on 60. So that's kind of a, a, a fun endeavor I got in the works right now with him. Yeah, it's very common when uh, when, you're, when your kid is in sports and they're good at it, you know, you're traveling. So you have no choice but to do homeschooling. I know. I've been... It, it's so funny. I told somebody the other day, um, I took a vacation. Not a vacation. I went on a trip to... Um, Portland, Oregon, and it was kind of it was kind of funny because that's the first time I've been around, away from my boys in the last ten years. Where I've been I've been taking my son skating. He's twelve now, so actually in nine years, we've been he's been skating nonstop. We've been traveling. We traveled around. Skateboarding has brought us around the world. Now uh, I've you... been to places I've never thought I've been because of his skateboarding. Are you a skateboarder yourself? Never skated a day in my life. <laughs> How true. did it all my, start? You know what's so funny? Am I, I met, so I'm Jamaican. So uh, to be honest with you, it, it's sad to say this, but I didn't know anything about skateboarding. I'm not from that culture. So I guess when my kid, when J um, Zion was about two and a half, three years old, we went to go visit his grandparents in West Palm. And he had his cousin longboard, had a longboard. So the kids fell in love with the longboard and their Nana bought all the kids longboard. And we came back to Miami and he was the only one that rode a longboard. He was the only one that kept riding it. So every day I had to take this kid to South Beach 
because we lived in North Miami at the time. So I had to take him to South Beach and he would skate the Broadwalk. As long as the Broadwalk, you see this little boy. I mean, when I say small, the boy was taller than him, just pushing on this longboard. And it was kind of cute at first. You know, people was like, oh my God, look at this little boy. And I ended up getting a longboard just to keep up with him. Uh, came home one day and he was on YouTube watching skateboarding. He was watching Tour Pudwell, Ryan Sheckler. And he was like, dad, I want a, um, a stunt board, a skateboard. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, not a longboard, a skateboard. Long story short, we ended up getting him a skateboard. And we didn't know any, we didn't know anything about skate park. So we just skating around the sidewalks. I'd take him across the street in North Miami to skate. And I own, the first restaurant we owned in Midtown is called Morgan's. So I was sitting at Morgan's one day and some friends came by and it was like, oh, you know what? We just passed this place down the block. Um, it's called Grand Central. It was this um, DIY skate park that Nick Katz had, had made for the kids. And I was like, what? And I drove him down there. He was three, three and a half. I drove him down there and we got out of the car and you could see the look on his face was like, wow. There was a bunch of real skaters in there. And I get in there and I'm looking around and I'm looking around and I was like, yo, is there anybody here that could teach my son? And they point me to this one um, skateboarder, um, Joel. And he was a pro skateboarder. And I went up to him and I was like, yo, can you teach my kid? And he was like, no, you know, I don't really teach kids. But there's another pro here, Danny Friends, a leader. And I introduced myself to Danny, asked him if he could teach my son. And he was like, I really don't teach kids to skateboard. And he was talking to me and he looked at Zion and he was like, but you know what? He looks like a really cool kid. Let's see what happens. And as they say, the rest is history. He skated with my son for the next, I'd say three or four years, every day. I'll take this little boy's um, skateboarding. You know what I mean? And I just I just got into it and I just realized that if he, lo if he loves to do it, so I have to show him support regardless. You know what I mean? I didn't force it on him. And my whole thing was like, if he keeps it, he keeps it. If he doesn't, I'm still good. But I'm going to go behind him 100%. And we just kept going at it, kept going at it. And then I think at about five or six people started to notice that, whoa, hold up. This little kid is not really normal because he was doing tricks that was way out of his, his league, but he was doing them. And then he got, his first sponsor was um, Mad About Skateboarding, which was a, a skate shop in Fort Lauderdale. They put him on. Um, then he got on to, Etnis, which was a shoe brand. Then he got on to um, SkateX, which was a kid skateboarding company from Cali. And then I think when he was six or seven, he got on to Santa Cruz. They gave me a call and said, you know, they liked him. And I was like, what's Santa Cruz? And get to find out his mom was like rich. Santa Cruz is like one of the most influential, oldest board companies in America. And we got on, you know, he got on them. They sponsored him. They flowed him. It was, at that time, he was a flow, which means they just sent him boards and Vans came on board then and was like, we like him too. And, you know, we'd like to see, you know, what we could offer him. And they started sending him free shoes. You know, I think I've been lucky in this sport that I've never ever bought anything for skateboarding for my son after he turned he's four earned. years old. Yeah. You know, he's been lucky and he's been good at it, you know? So this year he, he became amateur. He's an amateur skateboarder now, which, is I just found it's a huge thing, you know. is is really huge. That means one step away from being a pro skateboarder if they decide to turn him a pro skateboarder, you know. So and and it, that's his passion. That's what he says he wants to do. So I'm just behind him 100. percent And I don't skate to be honest. I could I could get on a skateboard and push myself, but I didn't know anything about skateboarding. I got into this world because of my son, and I fell in love with it. Um, as like skateboarding is like the ultimate thing to me now as a as they would say a non-skater you know but it's, it's it's a good teaching for kids it teaches i think skateboarding teaches kids about everything about life you know what i mean resilience dedication um if you fall don't give up just get back up and just stick to it until you get it done you know you have your set it's just yourself you're competing with not anybody else you know it's, it's one of those things where no one could tell you what to do in skateboarding. They could give you a little advice and tell you what to do different, but you have everything in skateboarding, you have to learn it on your own. You know what I mean? You have to, you have to tell, you tell yourself that 
I could always, I, I got to get this. I, nobody is going to get it for me. Nobody could flip this board. Nobody could do this trick. I have to learn this on my own. You know, skateboarding is, like, um, I think, a great, a great life teacher for kids if they really got into skateboarding. How does it feel to discover a passion or a skill with, with your son, for example, and then backing him 100% like you've done? How does that journey been from? Man, that journey has been phenomenal. You know, it's getting to the point now where I get a little bit sad now because he's at that age where he could go on trips on his own with his sponsors. They, they, they you know, they bless me where they, they let me fly out with him because he's still a minor. But it's been it's been a phenomenal journey, and I would never change it for anything. And it, it's kind of bittersweet now when I know he's he's growing up, he's becoming a teenager, and sooner or later he'll be gone. And thank God I still got that little six year old, the one you just saw. Mm. He's in skateboarding, so I could spend that. You know, if God spared my life, I could I could all I got him to kind of keep that passion going that his older brother you know started with me. You know what I mean? It's basically I'm 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 living my son dream with him. You know what I mean? I'm just along for the ride. I'm just here to make sure he keeps his feet on the ground, you know, stay humble and be respectful and just be true to what he loves. Awesome. Awesome. So skate free, mm -hmm. which is the nonprofit. How did right. that start? I'm assuming since you said you mentioned you got into the skate world because of your son and you fell in love with it, but how did skate free start so danny friends a leader he um the founder of skate free he's a skateboarder he's a 150 percent skateboarder no inner of his skateboarder so he had this when i met him he had this idea that he wanted to give something back to miami you know he moved to miami and he loved the city he wanted to give something back to miami and i was like what do you want to give back to me and he was like he wanted to build a skate park a real real skate park there was we had we have skate parks in miami but they're really far, far and few. And in Miami, you have to drive at least an hour, 45 minutes just to get to a skate park in the evening in traffic, right? Mm. And, and at that time, they, they were, you, you had to pay to go to a skate park, $5. You had to wear a helmet. They, you know, you, you had to go through all these rules just to skate at the skate park. And if you didn't follow them, you weren't allowed to skate at them. You had to find a skate park that didn't do that. So he was like, you know what? I got this organization. He had two two partners before us, for me and Nick. And he had it for a while. And I guess the other guys, they moved out. Changes came. And he was like, man, Rich, I really need to do this. And I would like to have you on board. And at the time, I still do. We owned a couple of restaurants in Miami. So I think his thinking was like, you know, I met this guy, Sunscape. He owns some restaurants in Miami. You know, it's a good look. You know what I mean? He's from the community. And then Nick Katz now um, had Grand Central. Nick is a skateboarder too. You know okay. what I mean? Really nice guy. He was a skateboarder. And Nick had the same dream. So Danny brought us all together and says, you know what? This is the organization, skatefree.org. You know, we put it together. Um, we went and met with, and we found a location under the 95. And at the time, MPA controlled, the Miami Parking Association controlled the, um, all these parking spots. Yeah. So we went to MPA met with them and they really back us. They love the whole idea of the skate park, but we still had to go to FDOT. And FDOT, you no, know, they they do what they do. They own all these parking lots. For for those that don't know, FDOT is the the Florida uh, Department, Department of Trans uh, uh, Transportation. Yeah. Florida, right? right? Florida Department yeah. of Transportation. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um MPA backed us. They had they had the lease with FDOT and they put it to FDOT and FDOT loved the idea and said, okay, let's see what we could do. We secured a lease. Um, I would say a 50 year, a 99 year lease. Uh, they blessed us with, we don't mean, we don't pay rent for the lot. You know, and we showed them a plan. We came up, we, we had um, Tito. I used to work for Team Pain. They built Skate Park. Um, they came in, um, you know, we designed the skate park, came up with the design, um, FDOT passed it. And no, no, let, let me, let me, let me take a step back. Then hmm. I'm way ahead of my time. So to build a skate park, we needed funding. We need, yes. we needed, we needed funding. So yeah, I was way ahead of my time. So we needed funding. So we, we were asking like, you know, we was trying to get all this funding 
you know, we went to the city, um, we was talking to the city and we wasn't getting anywhere. And Nick Katz, you know, his, his, his the Katz Foundation, um, Nick went to his dad and, and made a deal with his dad. His dad said to him, you know what? If you get the city to give any money, I will double it. I will, I will match them, right? Gave him an IOU and said, if you get any funds from the city, I will match it. So we, we petitioned the city. We had a meeting at City Hall. We busted a bunch of kids on buses and skateboard. Good, and good. We, yeah, we get to the meeting and everybody was like, we're not sure they're going to do it. And I mean, the meeting was packed. And Nick is the spokesperson for us. And Nick got up to speak. And um, Kian Ardeman at the time, he, he was the, um, the head guy. And Kian was like, um, there's a little kid in Miami that skates with this bushy head. If you ever seen Zion, he has this golden bushy hair, right? There's this little kid that everybody's talking about in Miami. Um, is he here? And Danny said, yep, held up Zion in the meeting. And Kian said, done deal. You know, they gave us, they gave us 600,000. That's amazing. They gave us 600,000. And Ken, that was supposed to be on the Zoom that we never saw. He was a a big part of it because he was, he was a skateboarder. Uh Uh-huh. So, you know, he had our backs. He was, he was an ally on the board. They gave us 600,000, but it still wasn't enough. I went back to Nick. Nick went back to his dad. His dad said, okay, uh, no, I don't my word. But he went. He went even further than on his word. He wrote us a check for, I think, 1.4 million. Wrote That's us amazing. a check. For, yeah, wrote us a check for 1.4 million and told us, go build a skate park. And to be honest, the, the, the Nick Katz Foundation and the Sandra James um, Foundation, they've been a really, they've been our backbone for this organization. They have, they've been funding us. They make sure we are we are okay, you know, so... Nick, Nick, dad and mom, they were, I, th- I think they were the most important aspect of us getting the skate park done. You know? And, you know, we got the skate park, brought the team in together and you see the finished product. It is, it's one of, I, it's rated as one of the best skate parks in the world. Miami has one of the best skate park in America. If not the best, they, they, they're trying to say it's the best right now. You know, and if anybody hasn't seen Lot 11 Skate Park, you could go to um, Lot 11 Skate Park on Instagram to check it out. You know, it's a phenomenal spot. Miami's first official skate bowl. We have a bowl in there. You know, it's, it's a beautiful park. Oh, I'm, I've been, I've been, I've drove by. I, have, I haven't gone down to see it, but I've seen it. And uh, I know that at the time, the commissioner was, liked it a lot and he skated. He he, yeah. I think he he even like broke his wrist once. Yes, intense, intense. But so, is the plan of Skate Free to create more parks in the future, or, or what's what does the future look like for Skate Free? So that's that's our plan. That's our plan is to create more to, to, to and enhance the skate environment in Miami and build more skate park. Go to other city. We are hoping that other cities will look at skate free, take this model that we have created and like, you know what? We could put a skate park in, in our city because it, it's a good thing for the, for the kids, for the young, the young generation that skate. It's, it's really, it keeps kids off the street, to be honest with you. You know, kids, all, you know, they have this old aspect of kids going street, um, street skating and skating, destroying their skate properties. But people do that because they didn't have anywhere to skate. And, 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 I, and I get it. Even when we the skate park, you're gonna have the skaters that go street skating because street skating is what is the embod. I, I even say the word embodiment of skateboarding. That's where the coolness comes in. But these skate parks are where I think these kids come to learn the craft. And if if it's a professional thing, they take it back to the streets to get to get the clips. And I just think if cities came by, looked at Lot Eleven. And just and just decide that you know we could we could we could take this model and bring it to our city, it would be an enhancement to, to I think to their community. Okay. Tell tell me more about the community aspect of skateboarding. Well, from my perspective, and I'm not a skateboarder. I'm just a dad that takes his kids skating and supports his kids. But what I've seen, you know, when I first got into skateboard um, with my son, people I, I realized that people looked at skateboarders as ruffians outcasts they don't care they damage places 
But when I got into skateboarding, what I found out about the skate community is that skateboarding has one of the most tight knit and loyal skate families there is. It's the only place I, a kid or a grown up, a girl or anyone could go with a skateboard, don't know anything about skateboarding, get on a skateboard and nobody will tell you, get off the, the, the skate park, leave the skate park, you can't skate, why you suck? You get on that skateboard and if you don't even know a trick and you skate down there in front of anybody, they all support you hundred percent. They will try to help you to be the best you could be on that board. They support each other a hundred percent. And don't get me wrong, you still have your bad apples, but skateboarding is one of the most supportive entity or, or people that, that does something together that stick with each other. They don't belittle each other. There's not, you're not good enough or you can't skate yourself. It's always, you're doing great. Oh my God. Oh, you tried on Ali. Yo, you're doing great. Keep it up. They are hundred percent supportive, man. And that's what I love because my son, this is what I got to say about Miami skate, skate, the skate community here, especially the older guys. They have shown my kids so much love when it comes to skateboarding. And, and you get your one and two that you have your differences with. But overall, they're one of the most supportive um, people that I've, I've run into. You know, and they come in all shapes, all sizes. It doesn't matter where you're from. doesn't matter your background, your race. Your, your sexual orientation. It don't, doesn't matter what you do. If you're a skateboarder, you are a skateboarder. And that's all they see. He skates, he's part of their family. You know, and that's, and that's what I love about that community. And, and I know my son, if he continues, if him and his brother continues to do this, he's in good hands. You know, people, the, the older heads, all the skaters are always going to support and look out for him. I like how, how the the sense of family and community are are tight are tight together yes you know? they are a, indeed that's the right word to use they have a sense of family you know they 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 no matter what they stick with each other they, it's so funny you might find skateboarders that don't like each other but the moment you said something bad about skateboarding they'll come together and they will back you they don't they don't put up with with outsiders coming in to disrupt it is is you got to be respectful in skateboarding and and that's one of the that's one of the aspects that i love about this skateboarding um this aspect of skateboarding is that they're supportive they stick together and they encourage you no matter what your level of skateboarding is no matter it doesn't matter to them if you're on a board you're a part of the family that's awesome i think that sounds like a very like a very warm Warm community and welcome community, and that's what you—that's what you want from 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 yeah. the community skate park and family. Exactly. So I have one more question for you. I know that we're running out of time. What is your favorite part of Miami? My favorite part of Miami, honestly, the skate park. And it's funny to say that, but, but I love listen. I love Miami. I've been in Miami for thirty something years. You know, my kids were born in Miami. I own a couple of restaurants here. I'm co-owner of a couple of restaurants here in Miami with my ex-wife. But Miami is one of the greatest places. It's so funny. Yesterday, I was sitting in one of my restaurants, Morgan's, and I was asking a friend of mine, like, you ever been in Miami and you see all these tourists in Miami and everybody's naked, even when they're not at the beach? And I asked my friend, why do you think that is? And he said, Richie, do you see Miami? A lot of people that come to Miami, where they're from, they don't have this weather. They don't have the beaches. Miami is one of the greatest places to come to, to just be yourself. You know, you don't have to worry about anything. It's, it's I don't know, man. Miami is just, it's one of the best places to be. The beaches, the sun, you know, and now, and now we have a great skate park where skaters could come, anybody could come and visit, you know? So if you've never been to Miami, take a trip here. You know, it's, it's a beautiful city. <laughs> Richie, thank you for joining us on the show and telling us the story behind Lot 11 Skate Park and for sharing your, your son's um, story as well and his successes. And I wish you good luck in your event this weekend. And, thank you, man. Uh, yeah, thank you so it much. Have, I thank you for having me on, man. That's, this is my first podcast, so I hope I did good. And I'm just going to plug my son one more time. If you go to Instagram, just go to Zion F on Instagram and you'll see him. And I, I guarantee you watch him one time, you're going to fall in love with him.
You got it. We'll share all your contact information on the show notes and uh, we'll tag you, of course. So thank you. And you did great. Right, you did great for your first podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right.